Hello, uh, in this video I'm gonna be talking about a common and standard and in fact kind of necessary part of data communication in 2020 at least, and that is notebooks. Uh, now notebooks are not necessarily a form of data communication, but they are a standard way in which people pass around uh, different kinds of results that they've gotten from their data. Uh, now what a notebook is, is it is effectively a thing that combines together the writing that you want to do, many sort of descriptive uh, analysis you want to say about your, your data, like, hey, this is the data that I have, this is what it shows, here's a report that I'm writing. It combines that with any sort of code that you want to write as well, right, as well as any sort of visualizations that come out of that code. It's effectively a way of automating a writing process or automating a paper or a report. Uh, and the thing that's really nice about it is that for one thing, it leaves a paper trail. So you know exactly what it is that you got, to, how you got to your analysis. Uh, you, you don't really don't want to be in a situation where you create a great visualization and you drop it into a Word document and then, you know, a month later, a year later, somebody comes back and says, hey, that was a great visualization. Can you make it again but with this new data? And you have no idea how you made it. Right? You don't want to be in that situation, and it is impressively common. And every, even though you think, ah, oh, no, that's not going to happen to me, and then it does. It does. You know, every, every time. So uh, the thing about notebooks is that because you have the code inside of the document itself, uh, you're good to go. Uh, the other nice thing about it is that it's very easily reproducible. Uh, not only can you show other people exactly the code that it is that you are using in a single handy document, if you just send them the, the source code for your document, it also means that if you have something you want to change, an error you want to change, it can automatically be reincorporated into your document. So if you if you do a visualization and somebody says, hey, change this one little thing, uh, you know, you can just change the code and then rerun the document, and it's automatically in the report again. Uh, so that's another nice thing about it. Uh, it also means that you can automate report writing in general. Uh, let's say that you, for example, uh, work for a company that every week you get a new data set that gets downloaded uh, and there's a report that needs to be written about it. And now, of course, the report just contains the exact same analyses every time. Uh, but, you know, if you're working in Word, then you would have to, okay, okay, I, I ran the analysis and I need to copy paste this thing, this result over here and this result over here. I need to bring in the thing. Where if you're working with a notebook, you can just push the button and point it to a new data set and it will pop out the new analysis ready to go. So given that, uh, what are we doing? How can we actually work with notebooks? Now there's a bunch of different kinds of notebook software out there. If you're working in Python, for example, you would use Jupyter is very common uh, for Jupyter. Uh, in Python, if you're working with R, you'll probably be working with something called R Markdown. Uh, R Markdown is a very, very simple uh, sort of uh, report writing uh, language. Uh, and I say language, it is technically a markup language, sort of like HTML, if you've ever used HTML, but it's a lot simpler than HTML. It's sort of on the line of, you know, if you've ever sent a text message and you wanted to emphasize what you were saying, so you put some asterisks around it to be like, I really mean this, that's the sort of level that Markdown is on. It's very, very simple. It's very, very intuitive as to how it works. Our Markdown uh, is the uh, way that uh, we can take code that we need, and the writing that we want and put it all into a document that we can share easily. So let's talk about how we can use R Markdown. So the first thing we can do is we want to create a new R Markdown document. So if we're in our studio, we just go to new file, new file, and select R Markdown. Uh, and this is going to let us create a new R Markdown document. Now you'll notice there's actually a number of different kinds of R Markdown documents we can use. We, there's many templates that we can download. Uh, for example, uh, we'll get into Flex dashboards later. Uh, there's presentations. You can do R Markdown slides. In fact, all the slides for this course are made in R Markdown. Uh, you know, if it, I, I, I'd say if you're ever making slides that are going to incorporate code into the slides, there's no better option than doing it in some sort of Markdown system. We're just going to be doing a document, regular document. You can decide what output format you want. Uh, so a sort of standard out, uh, Markdown output would be HTML. That's how by default most things work. Uh, but you can also output it as PDF. It's totally fine. Uh, or I mentioned, you know, you're working in Word. A lot of times you have to work in Word. Uh, you can just have our, you can just have Markdown output to Word. Uh, we're not going to do that. We're just going to go with HTML for right now. But the, the part of where you're writing the document is going to be the exact same no matter which one you pick. You don't have to do anything really different. Uh, except for some small minor cases that you don't have to worry about right now. Uh, it's just when you click the go button, it will create a different kind of document. You could even make the entire thing in HTML. If you say, hey, I also want this in Word, just, just change it to say, hey, output to Word, uh, and it would output to Word instead of right, right here. Instead of HTML document, I can say Word document, and everything here would still work. Uh, it would just give me a Word document instead. So what do we have in the R Markdown document? Well, up here at the top, we have some little parts that are set off by these little dashes. 
This is called our YAML section. Uh, and this gives us sort of the information about the document itself. So stuff like the title, your name, the date that it was written. By the way, a lot of the time you might want an R Markin Down document to update the date that it was written every time you rebuild it. Uh, you can do this, by the way, by putting some code in uh, that you can just memorize really. Uh, sys.date, like that, uh, with these little back ticks. By the way, this, this back tick tells it to run some code. This is the sys date function is being run in R and put in, put in there. That back tick is on, usually on the top left of your keyboard above the tab key is often where it is. Um, but, and we'll get to a little bit more into that later, but that's how you can update, have the date update every time you build it. And the output, the HTML document. This is also where you might put some options there. So for example, there are different themes that you can choose for the kinds of out documents that you output. You would put the theme in there, other sorts of options. Uh, so for example, you're doing a presentation in R Markdown, you would tell it whether you want it to create like a folder with all the files in it and all your graphs and then it refers to that or just a single HTML file that you can pass around, which is usually what I do for, for, for slides. So that's the YAML that has the overall options that you would set. Uh, for your R Markdown document. Then we have uh, the main document itself, everything after this first little uh, set of three dashes. So in R Markdown, uh, there are two main parts. There's the code and there is the text. Uh, and so uh, the code can come in two different, uh, sorry, three different formats. Uh, so one is that it comes in these little code chunks. So code chunks are set off with three dashes like this, the three, the three little uh, back ticks. And then you uh, put some, col some, uh, some curly braces in there and you say, okay, this is an R chunk. I'm going to name that R chunk. I'm going to say this is the setup chunk. Uh, and then you have options for your setup chunk. There's lots of options you can put in there. Uh, and uh, I'll talk about some more of those in a second. But this is a code chunk. Inside this code chunk, I can put whatever R code I want and it will run it when it runs the document. Uh, and depending on what you tell it to do, it could just run it in the background. Uh, it could show you the code itself in the document if you're trying to share your code uh, and so show people how something is done. You, or you could have it run and show the output of your code to the people. So for example, you want to put a, a graph making code in there and just have it put the graph in your document, you would do it in an R code chunk. Uh, so that's one way you can do R code chunks. Another way you can do it is with a single back tick in text. Uh, so for example, I can in here, I don't need to do three, I can do a single back tick and then another one, and then inside of here, I can say R, this is an R, two plus two. What that will do is that will say, hey, this is an R chunk. I, I, it knows that because I've said, hey, this is R code. It will run the two plus two and it will output the result for in line in the text. This is super handy, especially if you are writing a, uh, an automated report that wants to get updated with new uh, results every time you run it, right? You get that new data set, you wanna run it again and just have it automatically update all the results in line with the text. There we go, it's good to go. The other way you can do it is this exact same thing but without the back ticks. Uh, so I do like this, um, my code. Uh, this will make it format it as though it were code. It'll sort of put it in that code uh, 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 font but it will not uh, run the code itself. Okay, then we have uh, text. We have text. Uh, so the text uh, formatting in, in Markdown is very simple. Uh, so you can just write here, right? So here's just a paragraph that we are writing. Uh, you can do sectioning fairly easily. So here are these double hashtags that is starting a new section. You can do single hashtags that would be a bigger section, sort of a headline, oh, headline one in Word. The two dashes might, or the two hashtags might be headline two, three dash lines, uh, hashtags might be headline three. Uh, I'm not sure how deep it goes, but uh, you probably won't need more than that anyway. So we can do sectioning like that. Uh, in terms of formatting the text itself, very, very simple. Like I said, just sort of like you were writing a text message. So see these double stars around the word knit here? That's going to make it bold. If I wanted to make it uh, italicized, I could do single stars or perhaps underlines. Uh, will all work. Um, if I want to do a list, like a bulleted list, I could do... Uh, I know this, this differs a little bit depending on which kind of markdown you're doing, but you can do it like this. Uh, my bulleted list, second item, like that. Uh, if you want to do a numbered list, uh, you can just do numbered lists and it will interpret it properly as a numbered list. Uh, even more conveniently, you don't have to do one, two, three, you can just do one, 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 one. First item, second item, third item, right? And that'll be, that, that's, that, I, I have difficulty getting in the habit of doing that, uh, but it is a good habit to do, to get into, because if you want to add or remove items later, you don't have to renumber everything. 
so there's actually a lot more formatting options than this, but really almost all the time, this is all gonna be all you're gonna need. You need sections, you need bold and italics, uh, you need some lists maybe. The one other thing I will point out is links. Uh, you can do links and images uh, using a pretty straightforward thing. So if you do square brackets followed by parentheses, this is gonna be the title of the link. And then it's gonna be the place that you go with the link. Uh, you can do images by doing this exact same thing, but with an exclamation mark in front of it. And you can do caption of my image and then my image, you know, wherever that happens to be. Uh, beyond that, there are options. Uh, you can just put, if you're, if you're writing to HTML, you can just put straight HTML code in here if you like, uh, that will work. Um, but uh, uh, yeah, you can look at the at the Markdown uh, guide to see if you if you have more uh, processing or, or formatting needs. But this should probably get you most of the way to what you need. All right, let's go back to chunks real quick. Uh, so I mentioned there were options in the chunks. Uh, so you have you can just you say it's R, and then you name the chunk. Uh, what options might you have? Well, the main options that you're going to want to think about are echo and eval. Uh, so echo tells you whether or not to show the code that you have here. So, um, for example, we have echo equals false down here, meaning that this code is going to run, but it's not going to show you the code. This does not have echo equals false. And so when I run this, it's going to actually say the words summary cars in my document, and then it will show me summary, the, the summary of the, of the cars uh, data set. The other one I mentioned is eval. Uh, eval tells you whether or not to evaluate the code. So what if I want, I, I don't actually want to see the result of summary cars. I just want to show you the code. I can say eval equals false and it will, it will uh, show me the code summary cars, but it will not actually show me the result summary cars. Uh, again, there are more options available here, but those are the main ones that you're going to want to think about most of the time. That's all you're going to need to worry about. You can do all of your code in here from top to bottom from the start of your code to the end of your code. And in fact, you do want to include all top to bottom because when you when you build this, it's going to set, start its own little R environment. So if there's any libraries that you need, you need to load them in here, right? I want to load up here, library, tidyverse, right? And then it will those tidyverse uh, commands will be available to me throughout the rest of the document. Uh, this is a good way of making sure that your code can actually run from start to finish, because uh, it won't work. You know, when you're building this code and you're when you're building this document, and you're trying out different kinds of code. Yeah, you can work down in the console, um, and you know, okay, I don't. Uh, how, what do I need to do? Okay, I need to make this data set. Uh, you know, a equals ten, uh, and you know, you can try things out to make sure that it works. Uh, but once you go back to uh, building it, it's going to start all over. So you need to make sure that everything is self-contained uh, in your R Markdown document. And then once you're ready to go, you can just click knit and it will generate your document for you. You're gonna to need to save it somewhere. Once we have our document ready, which this isn't by the way, because I try, I'm trying to have it go uh, use an image that doesn't actually exist. So I need to take that out. Uh, but once you have it ready, you can just click this knit button and it will start creating the document for you. You have to name it and save it somewhere, uh, but then it will start to create your document. And then once it's done, it should show it to you uh, in the viewer pane. Once it's built, it should show it to you in the viewer pane here, so you can see this document that I had. Uh, so as I mentioned, we had uh, knit is in bold because it's got the double asterisks. We had uh, the single asterisks or the underscores giving us italics. We have our bulleted items uh, here, as I mentioned. So this is going to show us the code for summary cars, but it's not going to run it because I said eval equals false. Uh, this one did not show me the code because we said echo equals false, but it is going to show me the result, which is the graph that was drawn there. All right, that's a basic rundown of using R Markdown. Uh, this is the kind of thing you're going to want to get in the habit of. It's very good practice to store your code in Markdown documents because it makes sure that your stuff runs from beginning to end, that it's replicable, that you didn't do any steps in the console that you forgot to include in your analysis. Everything's just going to be right there to share uh, so that people can see what you did. All right, that's it. Thank you.